right, so this time we're going to be reflecting functions in the y-axis using absolute values, sort of. Uh, it's not quite a reflection in the y-axis, but you'll see what I mean, and this is the best title I could come up with for what we're doing. So let's look at this first function, f of x equals x squared minus 2x. And then we have this other function, g of x equals the absolute value of x squared minus 2 the absolute value of x. So you can see everywhere where x was, uh, I've now put the absolute value of x. Now in function notation, we can show this pretty easily. This function here is just straight up f of x. And we can say that this new function, g of x, is equal to f of the absolute value of x. So anything we put in there, obviously, uh, is just being substituted for x. And in this case, we're substituting the absolute value of x for x. So that's what's happening in this function. If you look at the three functions on our screen, or the six functions, you can see the same thing is happening here. And the same thing is happening here. X is just being replaced with the absolute value of X. And we're going to get this reflection in the Y axis, sort of. And again, let's take a look at what that means. So here I have the function F of X equals X squared minus 2X. Now, let's take a look at uh, F of the absolute value of X. So that's G of X equals the absolute value of X squared minus 2 the absolute value of X. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of the blue one for a second. And you can see we get this. And you can see it's symmetrical around the y-axis. It's kind of a reflection of uh, this one, but not really a reflection of this one, because a reflection of that one would look a little bit like, uh, a little bit different. Now, a reflection would actually look more like that. And you can see that whole thing's being reflected in the y-axis. It's being flipped around the y-axis. So what sort of reflection is really happening when we do this absolute value thing? So the reflection that's really happening is we're taking uh, everything x is greater than zero, so everything from x is greater than zero, and then we're reflecting that in the y-axis. And it's not really hard to see why that happened. All right, so here we have a uh, table of values here. Now, if I focus on this part for a second, so, and I sub in 0 into f of x, I get 0 squared minus 2, that's you know, 0. Okay, if I get, uh, if I sub 1 in, I'll get 1 squared minus uh, 2 times 1, so 1 minus 2, I'll get negative 1 there. And if I sub 2 in, I'll get 2 squared, which is 4, minus um, 2 times 2, which is uh, 0. I'll just put one more on the end, 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 3 is 6, which is Okay, now if I fill in the bottom ones, now the absolute values, they're going to be the same, right? Because if I sub 1 and 2 and 3 into the absolute value bits, I'll still get 1, I'll still get 2, I'll still get 3. So uh, I'll still get negative 1, 0, and 3 for those. And if I sub 0 into the absolute value, I'd still get that. Now, what about the negative 1? Well, if I sub negative 1 into all these absolute values here and here, I get positive 1, positive 1, positive 1. So I'll get that value, which means that when I sub that into that, I would get that value. If I uh, sub in negative 2 into that value, I get 2 now. So now I'm operating on 2, and I'll get the same value as if I operated on 2. And of course, if I was to sub in 3, I would get um, negative 3, absolute value of negative 3 is 3, 2, negative 3, uh, which is 3, and so then I'd get just what that value is there, which is 3. Now my stall has to stop working, so this could get interesting from here on out, but I don't think we need it too much. Let's just jump in and look at these ones really quickly. Of course, you are familiar with 2 to the x. That's an exponential function. Now think for a moment, what would 2 to the absolute value of x look like? It's going to follow the same rules as the previous one, and we get this. Again, we take the positive, uh, the function where x is greater than zero, and then we reflect that in the y-axis. Now, of course, we can go into this one, sine x and sine the absolute value of x. A sine x, of course, looks a little bit like that. Now, you might want to think for a little bit, is the function even going to change if 
I make sine the absolute value of x. Uh, now, remember, we take the positive direction of the x-axis and we reflect it. So, yes, it does change because we're taking that positive direction. So we get this neat little thing here. The big difference here is that we're reflecting the positive direction in that direction. Okay, so you can see that we are reflecting functions in the y-axis, sort of. Uh, now, we'll just write something really neat and succinct here. The graph of f of the absolute value of x is sketched by reflecting f of x for x is greater than or equal to zero in the y-axis. So we're taking that positive direction and then we're reflecting that in the y-axis. Um, that is it.